Hello and welcome to this Villa Lobos Etchy No. 1 Classical Guitar Supplemental Lesson. This is basically me walking through the piece and showing you how to practice it for games all the time, not just to play it. Why? Well, I haven't practiced guitar in three weeks. Christmas has been here, New Year's has been here, and I have two kids, so it's been very difficult for me to get onto the guitar. I managed it yesterday for the first time, and today I'm going to sit down with the guitar and I'm going to show you what I do to get my chops back up and running. So let's just dive straight in and take a look. There will be a commentary track with this as I walk through. I'm just going to sit and play and comment along and we'll see how it goes. There are probably going to be some mistakes, but you know, that's just the nature of the beast. Welcome to the private world of the classical guitar practice session. Alrighty, here we go. This is uh, me setting up and I'm just going to explain to you what I'm going to be doing now with this voiceover track. We're going to get an insight into my thoughts as I practice and get used to this piece. This was done in the afternoon. I haven't played, like I said, for a while and this was the second run through. Uh, here we go. Kicking in with the uh, metronome. Sound Bremer, free, fantastic app. Yep, turn it up. And so there is that, as well as, funnily enough, I had a little bit of red light syndrome here. As soon as I started playing, I noticed a ton of tension because I'd hit record, which you're gonna see in a second now. See the misfiring of my right hand. So at the moment, instead of concentrating on getting that pattern right, I am fully focused on my right hand and trying to relax it because I can feel the tension and it's really working its way down my arm. All right, there we go, starting to get a little better. And you can see me doing it too as I shift my arm around a little bit at a time. So these rhythms are the, the gallop, these rhythms are the mix rhythms, the two basic skip rhythms that I use to focus on getting my right hand correct and planting. Right, gallop rhythm number one. So again, I'm doing the rhythm and I'm planting the finger next in sequence. And obviously you have to do it three times before it lands back on the first beat at the top on string six. So keep that in mind, very important. So I'm keeping track of that as I'm playing through these. Watching my hand, keeping my right hand uh, controlled. Still not quite got rid of all of the tension there. So I am repeating it a little bit more than I would normally do. Next up, hopefully, should be triplets. There we go, triplets. So this time it's full sequential planting. I'm not planting ahead like I was on the previous ones. I'm actually planting as I'm playing ever so slightly. And finally, semiquavers, where the piece is at. Back to triplets, because I still wasn't quite happy with everything, so we'll go back into semi-quavers in a minute. Right, now you will see my right hand find control kick in. As once I'm comfortable with the semi-quavers, I'm going to drop, there we go, I'm going to drop the volume on all but string number six. String number five now. So I'm practicing on being able to bring the volume down and target certain strings. String four is always a killer for me. And you can hear it now, because it's not quite 100%. String three, finger I. Still on string three. There we go, string two now, which is where Villalobos is normally played. Most people accent string two or the next one, which is string one. But this is excellent right hand find control here, which is what I'm trying to aim for. And a 
it's not about accenting or bringing it loud, it's about dropping the volume down on all the strings I don't need. And just leaving the accented string up at normal volume. So now I'm just working back up the strings, back up the string two, now string three. String four, sounding better. One or two little string five and string one. So now we're going to start doing chords. I always practice the opening bar first because that is going to be the where the pressure is most. So I need to know that that's secure, and I use a technique of cutting the strings down and I only practice half the pattern and then cut it down. Right, into the B7 to diminished shift. So now I'm practicing shifts, and again, I'm cutting it down. Half the pattern, strings, all six strings, and then five strings, and then four strings to make the, the shift change faster and more difficult. to the E minor, E major, A minor shift. So these are mainly my difficult shifts, the shifts that I think I need more work on or the, the shifts that I think are, are more challenging in this piece. So hence the reason they get extra practice. Again, starting to speed it up by cutting down strings. Not worrying about squeaks or anything like that here. I'm just worrying about shifting and getting it nice and clear. to the big technical challenge, that chromatic descending E minor chord. I will repeat this a couple of times now to make sure that that is, again, secure. It's one of those moments in this piece which really stands out and you have to get it nailed every time. So, didn't do it that time. So I'm listening for my hammer-ons, making sure that they're clean. I'm also trying to make sure that those top notes are doing really well as well. Right here, I am practicing my bar technique. I am pulling back on the guitar, making sure that I am not squeezing with my thumb. I am consciously practicing that. And then that quick shift up to the B7 chord there again, it's another area that needs work. This I'm just playing for fun because I love the sound of this, these two chords together. And I'm making sure that I can actually do different tonalities. Harmonics. At speed. I do not slow them down. So I know if I can play them at speed, I then will be able to play them with rubato. <laughs> I had to think about that. Still thinking. Alright, not happy with the ending, so I'm doing the triplet on the end, so make sure that that is clear. And then the last two chords, again, very important bit of this piece. Not getting that high note correct. So I'm working because I'm using a harmonic on my high B there. All right, once that's done, as you can see, my left hand is now warmed up. I go into left hand equal strength with the approach tones. So I'm using one or two fingers here to do it and my IM finger. Concentrating on my hammer-ons, making sure that they're nice and clean. And now I've shifted to fingers two and three. So again, I'm making sure that my left hand is getting a proper workout with this. I have also shifted to fingers M and A now to challenge them and to make sure they're coordinated as well. Now I'm working on the toughest one, fingers three and four. I've switched back to IM finger because I haven't done this in a while and it was quite tough. So normally I would do it with IA, you know, the two weakest finger combinations I could think of. 
fingers three and four on the left hand and IA on the right. Reverse, very important. So again, I'm still with fingers three and four and I am sticking with IM, reversing no hammer on. Concentrating on making sure that it's nice and in time and clear and clean. Fingers two and three now. And fingers M and A. Again, trying to use different combinations of fingers. I haven't done this in a while, so it was a little tough for me um, to really, I had to really concentrate on this section. And you can hear it because they're, they're not firing as well. And then back to one and two and I am. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm in a little bit of pain there. Speed bursts. Short, one beat. And I'm practicing my fingers that I generally use to play fast, which is just a high M. I don't worry about playing all my fingers fast because there's just not enough time in the world to practice it. So now I'm putting the two chunks together. Chunk one and chunk two. Making sure that I'm landing on the beat. This is really important practice because as guitarists, we're not going to always be able to play three notes per string, which is easier than what I'm doing currently, which is two notes. This kind of practice pays off when you have to play something like Roland Dean's Tango and Scar because he uses the same idea, in fact, the same pattern in his in the second section of it, just in semi quavers. And now I'm trying my best to make sure again that it's all three chunks. And just doing some extra. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Alrighty. I'm happy with it. My hands are warmed up. <laughs> Big sigh of relief there because it was tough to do. Alrighty. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, there is a ton ton of information in there. The main point to take away is you do not need to practice the entire study in its entirety, one bar after another, one chord after another. In here, I've highlighted the main things that I really needed to work on, but for the most part, this study is a right hand driven study. So I have worked the crap out of my right hand. I have made sure that I have isolated the shifts that are really difficult still for me, especially when I haven't played in a while. And then I have gone back and looked at my left hand and made sure that my left hand got a workout too. When you don't have a lot of time, and I don't have a lot of time because I'm a full-time dad and you know all the rest and life, that's just the way it is. I need studies that are just gonna do it for me straight away, work my chops, work my technique, and then I can go off and do something else or I can learn some new music. I don't have time to be playing an entire study all the way through. It's just not gonna happen. So hopefully you've got a little bit of an understanding on how you can use your etudes um, to really push your technique and to keep it fresh, but mainly just to push it. If it was easy for you, going through all of that like that, and you know, for me, eventually it will do, you put the metronome up, progressive overload, you make it faster, you make it harder, or you put the metronome down to make it a different challenge, because it's just as challenging playing very slow as it is playing very fast. These are things to keep in mind. If you've liked this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There is more great content coming your way. Failing that, the next video for this sort of focus on practice series is going to pop up just about now.